So when you first look at the iPad 9th generation, you might think that it looks a little dated there on the front compared to all the other iPads. And in some cases, it may be overlooked because of that. Although it is a little older now, it was released back in September of 2021, but is it still worth it in 2023? Normal price for the iPad 9 is $329, but I've seen it as low as $250 to $260 here recently, which is a really good price for this tablet. You've got the same storage options as the iPad mini and the iPad 10, so 64 or 256 gigabytes. As far as the screen goes, you get a 10.2 inch with 1620 by 2160 resolution. Obviously, you're going to have the bigger bezels on top and bottom, but the plus side is that you've got the fingerprint scanner or touch ID right there on the front as well, which in my opinion is easier to use than when they've got it on the power button. And the nice thing is you can actually zoom in on YouTube videos now if you want to get rid of the black bars on top and bottom. So that should make things quite a bit better. And even though this display is not fully laminated like the more expensive iPads. It does have 500 nits brightness and is going to look good when playing games, watching movies, shows. I think most people are going to be okay with the screen quality on the iPad 9. Now the iPad 9 is not going to have the best battery life out there, but still lasted about five and a half hours in my battery drain test at 100% screen brightness. So it should last you most of the day without too much effort, especially if you turn the screen brightness down. And I feel like the battery life on here is going to be just good enough for most people. If you've watched my other videos, you may have noticed I lean a little more towards Android than what Apple has to offer as far as software goes. But other than Stage Manager, which you get on the more expensive iPads, the software on here is going to be similar to the other iPad lineup. It's currently on iPadOS 16.2 as of this video, and I believe the iPad 5th generation also gets this version of software as well. So that gives you an idea of how long the iPad 9 is going to continue to get updated dates. Now, as far as performance goes on the iPad 9, it's going to be a little more powerful than others in this category. You can actually do some video editing on here. It's also going to be good for gaming and should be able to handle just about every other thing you throw at it. Again, for an entry level tablet, it's going to be tough to beat this as far as performance goes. Nice thing is you can use the first gen Apple Pencil on here, which is going to be good for drawing, taking notes, just moving around the software. And while I tend to like the S Pen on Samsung tablets a little bit better, it's still nice to have this option on the iPad 9, even if charging on it is a little weird. And unfortunately, you can't snap it to the side or the back of the tablet either. Now the speakers on here is going to be a weaker area for this iPad considering you've just got two there at the bottom or on the side depending on how you hold it. They're still fairly loud but just not as balanced as on some of the other iPads. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what to expect. Then when it comes to the cameras, you've got an 8 megapixel rear facing camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide for the front facing. Also has center stage that's going to follow you around, keep you centered during Zoom meetings or video conference calls. It only shoots up to 1080p resolution though for video recording, so not quite as high as some of the other iPads in their lineup. Still not bad quality for the price in my opinion. Here's a few quick samples just to give you an idea of what to expect. So is the iPad 9 still worth it in 2023? I would have to say yes. It still has a lot of life left in it. It also performs quite well compared to other tablets in this category and should be a nice option out there for people looking for a more affordable tablet as long as you don't mind the dated look on the front with the larger bezels. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishby Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.